Using Flux in Comfy UI can be complicated. From FP8, NF4 to GGUF. Which one do you need for your hardware? Not to mention some of these workflows on Civitai. So yeah, it's overwhelming. That's why I made two workflows and a guide. Level one covers text to image, image to image, simple upscaling, and image to text. Level two has add detailer, in painting, out painting, and advanced upscaling. The download guide is completely beginner friendly and tells you exactly what files you need. All this is on Patreon, but don't worry, it's completely free. If you are just here for the good stuff, pause this video and click the link in the pinned comment in the comment section. It has everything you need. Or you can stick around for a deeper breakdown. Now before we jump into the hands-on part, let me show you a few images so you can get a feel for what Flux is really capable of. Compared to SDXL, the outputs are far more cohesive, less messed up eyes and fingers. These images were generated using my avatar Laura. By the way, Noodletron is powered by likes now, so if you don't like the video, he will die. All right, let's dive into Flux Bootcamp. All these crazy nodes? That's Noodletron. He's been raised back from the dead and given one more chance in Flux V1. There are a few different model options depending on your hardware. If you're on a high-end GPU with 16 gigabytes VRAM or more, you'll want the FP8 models. If you're on lower VRAM, say 12 gigabytes or less, you'll be using GGUF versions instead. In the workflow, in the global model section, click these nodes and make sure to select the model files you actually have. If you're using GGUF, make sure to drag the noodle like this and connect it properly. Now I've had a bunch of people message me saying they can't get the workflow to work. So let me settle this once and for all. If you don't select a file you actually have and try to run it, you'll get this error. Value not in list. This is a really complicated way to say, hey, we couldn't find that file name in the folder. Maybe you need to select one you actually have. Noodletron actually warns about this in the workflow note, so if you're using this, please just follow Noodletron. He knows what he's doing. All right, let's finally get to the fun part, the demo. Let's start with text to image. Thankfully, it's not a giant node mess like someone threw a pot of spaghetti at the wall. Just type your prompt in here, select your resolution using this custom node I made, and hit run. This Flux empty latent image node has presets so you don't have to type in the same dimensions over and over. And boom, there's your image. Here are a few more examples. Same workflow, just different prompts. All right, let's move on. Unless you really want to see Nightmare Shrek kissing Noodletron. Oh, hell no. Yeah, didn't think so. This is image to image. Essentially, it will blur your image, then rebuild it while trying to follow your prompt. Raising to noise strength will increase how much it gets blurred. Now let's quickly go over simple upscale and image to text. Simple upscale works best with X2. It enlarges the image without ruining quality, so it's solid for basic resolution boosts. Image to text is for when you don't feel like typing. Just drop in your image, get the description, and paste it into text to image. That's it. One day, we'll probably just stare at the screen and it'll know what we want. That wraps up level one. Now let's move into level two. We'll start with add detailer. Flux already does faces pretty well, but it's great for fixing faces from SDXL images. 
You don't even need a prompt. Just load an image and run. Don't worry about all these crazy settings. Everything worth knowing is explained by Noodletron. Now for in-painting, I personally find it to give blurry results, but for fixing this girl's brush, it worked well. I tried making this woman's hair colorful, but it just made it reddish. Although pink hair obviously worked, I'm realizing flux fill might just require more prompting work than I'm used to. I find in painting to be really fun, especially SDXL in painting, which I will show an example in a second where I slowly transform an entire image bit by bit. Here is some SDXL in painting from my mega SDXL workflow. This clip was actually sitting in the vault for a while, but it deserved some love. It uses the in-painting version of my SDXL Merge Hyper 3D. I went over all of this in my last video, but what stood out here is how well SDXL followed my prompts, way better than Fluxfill. If you want to try it yourself, this is included in my free SDXL Level 2 workflow on Patreon. You can really see how I'm slowly transforming the entire image. I had a lot of fun making this clip. This is out painting. It's almost cool, but tends to fumble the sharpness. Since it uses flux fill, results also can come out a bit blurry. I found it works best when you're just extending the bottom a little. Honestly, I'm not even sure if I'm using it right, so if anyone knows why Flux Fill keeps giving me blurry results, drop it in the comments. But iterating like I am works well enough. Last but not least, Upscale Advanced. It keeps things fast with just 10 steps and lets you go two times or even four times on the size. I lowered Denoise Strength to 0.25 instead of 0.5 to reduce how much the image changes. Now let's try upscaling by 4. All you need to do is change it from 2 to 4 in the upscale node, then load an X4 upscale model. Now let's wait 5 minutes to see Nightmare Shrek in 4K. And that wraps up level 2. While level 1 gave you the basics like text to image, Level 2 gives you the tools that support and refine those results. This is Mega Flux Level 3. It includes Levels 1 and 2 as well, all in one place, but adds some powerful exclusives on top. To avoid dooming myself to another week inside a video editor, I'm just going to quickly go over each group. Flux Depth uses the depth map from an image, letting you prompt whatever you want while keeping the original layout intact. It's perfect for restyling an image without messing up its structure. Flux Canny works off an edge map instead, and it's super useful for reimagining specific parts. Open Pose is pretty self explanatory. Poo Lid lets you use a face as a reference, then prompt as usual. Redux lets you transfer the look and feel of one image onto another, which can lead to some really creative results. Face Swap, of course, lets you swap faces but does so at low hardware cost and is fast. Face Restore is great for fixing bad SDXL faces, also fast. And finally, Blend Images lets you merge two images into something entirely new. And if you don't want to mess with manual setup, don't worry, I made a one-click installer for Megaflux. You just drop it inside your comfy UI folder double-click the launch file, and it handles everything. It checks your GPU and RAM, picks the best models for your system, installs all the UNETs, text encoders, upscale models, and even problematic packages like Insight Face and Face Xlib. It'll retry failed downloads, continue where it left off if interrupted, and logs everything. It even knows if you already have a file but a different name and won't re-download it. It's included with Megaflux on Patreon. Just download and run. That's it. Since you made it this far into the video, I'll tell you a secret. I hit a link that gives a few people a free month of power users. 
you get all the good stuff, Mega, the one-click installer for both SDXL and Flux. I made sure to put it where no one dares to go, the description. So go check it out before it runs out or expires. That's all for now. Stay creative, stay maxed out.